This is a prison, surrounded by a security fence, topped by razor wire. Behind that fence, and many others just like it throughout the state, correctional officers and other TDCJ staff members supervise hundreds of convicted criminals. For most people, all TDCJ does is lock them up. But there's a lot more to the Texas Department of Criminal Justice than that. The mission of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice is to provide public safety, promote positive change in offender behavior, reintegrate offenders into society, and assist victims of crime. From the moment they enter the criminal justice system, offenders receive supervision and transitional services through a collaborative partnership of community supervision officers, agency staff, volunteers, community service providers, and spiritual leaders. The dedicated professionals who oversee the supervision and rehabilitation of offenders stand as proof of TDCJ's commitment to public safety. This is TDCJ Today. With headquarters in Huntsville and Austin, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice has more than 100 prison units and 66 parole offices throughout the state and there are hundreds more local offices responsible for community supervision of probationers. The governor of Texas appoints a nine-member board to oversee TDCJ, which in turn selects an executive director to manage day-to-day -day operations. Four primary operating divisions of the agency oversee the supervision of offenders. The Community Justice Assistance Division, which works with community supervision offices to administer adult probation, the Correctional Institutions Division, which oversees secure facilities. The Private Facility Contract Monitoring Oversight Division, which oversees privately operated facilities. And the Parole Division, which is responsible for supervising offenders when released from incarceration. Other key divisions within the agency and the Wyndham School District provide the rehabilitative and support services needed to house and supervise offenders prepare them for re-entry into society, and help crime victims exercise their rights to be informed and participate in the criminal justice system. The TDCJ Community Justice Assistance Division does not work directly with offenders, but helps courts and local community supervision and corrections departments, or CSCDs, develop their own community-based services by evaluating programs and efficiently distributing state funds. The division also trains and certifies community supervision officers and issues standards for CSCD programs. Community supervision officers work with local court and law enforcement agents to create a unique supervision plan designed to divert offenders from prison and give them the tools they need to succeed in society. Conditions of probation may include time in an intermediate sanctioned facility, substance abuse treatment center, or outpatient counseling. Other terms of community supervision, such as community service and electronic monitoring, aim to keep offenders active in society and reduce the number of incarcerated offenders in Texas. In fact, the vast majority of criminal offenders in Texas are supervised right in their own communities at a substantial cost savings to taxpayers. The Texas Legislature has strengthened these diversion programs by increasing appropriations for community supervision. This additional funding has been used to decrease probation officer caseloads, increase the number of residential treatment beds available, and offer aftercare programs to more offenders. The impact these diversion programs have on offender population growth is one factor that led to the first prison closings in the history of the state. Sometimes community supervision is not an appropriate punishment or offenders violate the terms of their probation. In these cases, the court will send the offender to one of our secure correctional facilities for incarceration and rehabilitation. At intake, an offender's medical, psychological, educational, and substance abuse needs are determined through a series of comprehensive assessments. While incarcerated, most health care is provided by the University of Texas Medical Branch at Galveston 
and the Texas Tech University Health Science Center with healthcare professionals employed by the TDCJ Health Services Division monitoring the access and quality of that care. Each offender receives a rehabilitation plan that follows them through incarceration and places them in support and rehabilitative programs that ensure their individual needs are met. While incarcerated, many freedoms we take for granted are restricted. Offenders are out of bed and breakfast is served in the chow hall before sunrise. All physically able offenders are required to hold a job and most work assignments begin at 6 a.m. Most jobs are support positions, such as cooking, cleaning, maintenance, or community service projects. Correctional officers routinely search offenders and their cells for contraband. Rules are strictly enforced, and offender movement throughout the unit is closely monitored. Televisions are only available in shared day rooms, and tobacco use is strictly prohibited. In Texas, life behind bars is not easy, but there is hope for rehabilitation. The Wyndham School District is an accredited in-prison school system funded by the Texas Education Agency that gives offenders the opportunity to get a quality education while serving their sentence. Literacy and college-level courses increase an offender's chances of obtaining a job once released, while parenting, and cognitive intervention classes help offenders develop the life skills they need to reintegrate into society. The Career and Technical Education program allows offenders to earn industry-recognized certification in areas such as welding, computer maintenance, automobile repair, and the culinary arts. These courses are taught by licensed instructors and give offenders the skills they need to get a job. For offenders with chemical dependency issues, the Rehabilitation Programs Division provides intensive treatment through programs such as the Substance Abuse Felony Punishment Facility, In-Prison Therapeutic Community, or Driving While Intoxicated Recovery Program. Many offenders housed in administrative segregation have the opportunity to participate in programs such as the Administrative Segregation Pre-Release Program, Transition Program, and the Serious and Violent Offender Reentry Initiative. Many sex offenders must participate in a mandatory sex offender treatment program prior to release. These programs range from 4 to 18 months and focus on developing fundamental life skills through cognitive intervention, recovery, relapse prevention, and anger management. In addition to rehabilitation treatment programs, an offender may participate in a faith-based pre-release program such as the Inner Change Freedom Initiative. The Rehabilitation Programs Division also has oversight of certain academic programs, including the Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary, which offers qualified offenders an accredited bachelor degree in biblical studies in return for 10 years of offender ministry and post-secondary college courses offered by colleges and universities close to TDCJ facilities. With a focus on re-entry planning, the Re-Entry and Integration Division builds upon the success of these programs by providing the continuum of care offenders need as they transition back into society. Re-Entry and Integration collaborates with Wyndham School District, the Rehabilitation Programs Division, parole and community supervision, as well as local providers and family members to create a support system for the offender and eliminate many of the obstacles offenders face. This collaboration also reduces the chances of recidivism. Within six months of release, re-entry case managers conduct an assessment to identify an offender's pre- and post-release needs. This may mean finding the offender housing, arranging for medical care, or assisting the offender in finding a job and transportation. Case managers also engage veteran offenders in the federal process of securing military discharge paperwork and establishing veterans' benefits. One major barrier offenders face is getting the identification documents they need to get a job. To solve this problem, the Reentry and Integration Division has collaborated with the Social Security Administration, the Department of State Health Services, and the Department of Public Safety to provide offenders with a Social Security card, birth certificate, and state identification card upon release. 
With these documents in hand, a recently released offender is immediately employable and has a successful path to re-entry. The Texas Correctional Office on Offenders with Medical and Mental Impairments is a component of the Reentry and Integration Division that works with special needs offenders. Takumi case managers identify offenders with mental illness or developmental disabilities, serious or terminal medical conditions, physical disabilities, and those that are elderly to arrange medical and psychiatric aftercare services. Most offenders serve a portion of their sentence in the community. The Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles decides who is eligible for release and establishes conditions of supervision based on the offender's rehabilitative needs. The Parole Division ensures those conditions are met while supervising the offender in the community. For most offenders, this includes monthly visits with a parole officer, employment verification, and supervision fees. Higher risk offenders assigned to specialized caseloads have increased supervision requirements, which may include more frequent reporting, electronic monitoring, or GPS tracking. Electronic monitoring allows parole officers to determine if an offender is following the approved daily schedule and returning home by an established curfew. This reinforces acceptable behavior and holds the offender accountable for his actions. GPS tracking, a more active form of monitoring, allows parole officers to track offender movement throughout the day and respond more rapidly if a violation is committed. If an offender violates conditions of parole, the parole officer investigates the circumstances involved, the seriousness of the violation, and determines the most appropriate action. Depending on the nature of the action or incident, Interventions that may be taken for a violation range from compliance counseling to a request for an arrest warrant. For offenders who might benefit from more extensive rehabilitative services, district reentry centers located throughout the state offer assistance in anger management, substance abuse education, cognitive restructuring, pre-employment counseling, and victim impact panels. The Victim Services Division is dedicated to providing direct, personal assistance to crime victims and victim survivors, ensuring they are given an opportunity to participate in the criminal justice process. This is done through programs such as the Confidential Victim Notification System, which provides victims and other interested parties with notification regarding offender status at over 80 different points in the incarceration and parole supervision process. Registered users receive these notifications by email, letter, or both. Some information regarding offenders is also available 24 hours a day through a toll-free automated system known as Victim Information and Notification Every Day, or VINE. When requested, VINE will automatically call and notify victims if an offender is being processed for release. Additional information and referrals can be obtained during business hours through the Victim Services Hotline. Victims and victim survivors who feel they would benefit can request to participate in a Victim Offender Mediation Dialogue, or VOMD. A VOMD allows victims to meet with the offender responsible for the victimization and receive answers to questions they have about the offense. The Victim Services Division also oversees the Texas Crime Victim Clearinghouse, which collects victim impact statements from district and county attorney's offices, provides training for completing the victim impact statement, and produces a quarterly newsletter that serves as a central source of information for crime victims, victim advocates, and criminal justice professionals. You've seen how the employees of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice work to accomplish the agency's mission, but their jobs would be even harder without the dedicated service of thousands of community volunteers throughout the state. These individuals assist in providing literacy and educational programs, 
life and job skills training, parenting classes, drug and alcohol rehabilitation, faith-based programming, and other programs to aid in the transition from confinement to society and reduce recidivism. Their efforts complement the hard work and determination of more than 37,000 criminal justice employees and ensure the mission of the agency is accomplished every day. Whether our employees supervise offenders, deliver rehabilitative services, assist crime victims, or perform one of the many critical support functions necessary for this agency to operate effectively, these dedicated public servants proudly serve the people of Texas. If you would like to learn more about TDCJ, you can find detailed information on the agency's website at tdcj.texas.gov. And the next time you drive by a prison, keep in mind that you're seeing only a small part of the picture. The real story is as big as the state we serve.